<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Kreutz, and welcome to Halloween DIY and How To. In this edition, I'm going to show you how to create this animated skull. It's a perfect companion for the levitating table prop. With it, you can add an additional level of animation to the already ghostly levitating table. How is it done? Well, I'm going to show you how, so let's get started. Here are some of the items that you will need to create this prop. The most important item is, of course, this plastic skull with the hinged jaw. Now, this exact skull may not be available since product styles and supplies change from season to season. So, look for a skull that is approximately 7 to 8 inches in size, made of hard plastic or resin, and of course, it must have a hinged, freely moving jaw. You will need a decorative faux book box or something similar for the skull to sit on. For a reference, this one measures 7 inches by 8 inches by 2 inches. Some household glue, approximately 3 feet of fishing line, epoxy clay, two 1 inch zinc plated corner braces. They usually come in a 4 pack complete with screws. If they don't come with screws, then you will need 4 similar sized wood screws one extra small one half inch wood screw and one screw eye in the size range of one inch by one half inch. Place the skull onto the book box with the chin of the jawbone held to the book's surface and the back of the jaw elevated around one half inch off the book's surface. This will allow room for the base and back of the skull to tilt back on its own, opening the mouth of the skull. It is in this position that we need to permanently affix the skull's jawbone to the book cover. Position the skull to your liking on the book. Once happy with its placement, mark the outline of the jaw on the book's cover. Avoid using a permanent marker. Instead, use something like this pastel colored pencil because it leaves a mark that is easily wiped off. Since the two corner braces will be placed at the back of the jaw, give yourself lines to reference their eventual placement on the cover of the book. Those lines should be directly across from and in line with each other, like this. Place the two corner braces onto these marks with the flat part of each brace facing towards each other. Place the skull back on the book between the corner braces. The upright portion of the corner braces should be sitting snugly against the jawbone. Carefully remove the skull and without moving the corner braces, drill pilot holes using a very small drill bit at the screw hole of each angle plate. Temporarily screw the corner braces to the surface of the book. Since most of these books are just made of heavy cardboard covered with embossed paper, be very careful not to over-tighten the screw. You don't want to strip out the hole. Place the skull back between the corner braces with the rear of the jaw raised about one half inch off the book's surface, or whatever height is best for your skull in order for it to freely tilt back, causing the mouth to open. Double check how everything is working, then make a mark on the jaw at the holes of each corner brace. Also make a mark on the book just inside and towards the front of the jaw by the chin. This is where a hole will be drilled for the fishing line to go through. Mark that hole between one to one and a half inches in diameter. This will give room for the fishing line's movement. Make a corresponding mark on the back of the book directly below the mark above. Remove the skull and again, using a very small drill bit, drill pilot holes at the two marks on the jaw. Also drill a pilot hole at the inside top of the mouth, about a half an inch behind the upper front teeth. Screw the very small wood screw nearly all the way into this hole. Temporarily remove the corner braces and using a one inch to one and a half inch paddle bit, carefully drill the two holes for the fishing line. For best results, drill halfway from both sides instead of all the way from just one side, like this. Permanently secure the two corner braces back in place by using both glue and screws. Do not over tighten the screws. 
Then attach the skull to the book by screwing the corner braces to the jaw. Like this. Tie one end of the three feet of fishing line to the small screw that is just inside the skull's upper mouth. Fish the other end of the fishing line through the two holes in the book. Test the skull's movement by pulling down on the fishing line. The weight of the back of the skull should tilt the skull backwards. If not, small weights, such as fishing weights, can be attached to the back of the skull to help tilt it back on its own. To hide the corner braces, use a small amount of epoxy clay, mixed according to the directions, over the brace and onto the jaw, extending the look of the jaw down to the book's surface. Wear gloves and work fast, depending on the setup time of the epoxy clay that you use. Work on one corner brace at a time and only use enough clay to cover the brace and to extend the jaw. I used a piece of mixed clay the size of a small grate for each brace. Make sure that you feather the clay out over the jaw area adjacent to the brace. That way the jaw bone and the clay will look seamless. When the clay is fully hardened, paint with an acrylic hobby paint the same color as the jaw bone. If the paint is not an exact match, use that paint on several other areas of the skull. This will help blend the newly painted jawbone extension with the rest of the skull. Use paint color or colors that match the book cover in order to hide the part of the corner brace that is attached to the book's cover. Using flat black paint in and around the fishing line hole will help to conceal it. You can also use that flat black paint at the mouth, nose, and eye sockets. Using a black permanent magic marker on the fishing line will help it to disappear when the lights are dimmed. The animated skull prop is now ready to be added to the levitating table. Dress your tabletop with the skull prop. Mark on the tablecloth the location of the fishing line hole, making sure that the fishing line hole is over one of the two speakers that are located below on the infant swing base. Cut an X at the two layers of the tablecloth at your mark. Fold back the corners of the tablecloth, giving you room for a drill bit. Drill a hole through the plywood tabletop about one inch in diameter. After cleaning off the sawdust, feed the fishing line through that hole and place the skull props hole that is on the underside of the book directly over the hole in the tabletop. Connect the fishing line to the infant swings base by first screwing the screw eye into one of the holes of the speaker located directly below the tabletop hole. The speaker holes vary in size, so select a hole that is appropriate for the size of screw eye that you are using. Next, turn on the infant swing and stop it when the table is at its highest position. Thread the fishing line through the screw eye and pull down on the fishing line until the mouth is just closed. At this point, tie the line to the screw eye with a loose knot. Turn the infant swing on to your desired motion and the lowest speed. Check the motion of the skull and make any necessary adjustments to the fishing line by either tightening or loosening it. Once happy with the skull's movement, firmly knot the fishing line to the screw eye. Well, it is now time once again to turn off the lights and turn on the spooky magic. Thank you for watching this video and please consider becoming a subscriber if you have not already. safe and spooky Halloween. Happy haunting!